Hello, my name is Dr. Sandy Hardy and I'm the Medical Director of Occupational Health Services for Prisma Health. Uh, today I'm going to do another video in this series that we started at the beginning of the year. Uh, the topic today is actually going to be related to injuries that we see in our occupational health uh, offices. So the most common injuries that we see are slips, trips, and falls. And what can happen after a, a slip, trip, or fall can be contusions, can be lacerations, uh, can be fractures, can be strains, sprains, lots of different injuries due to this uh, type of injury, you know, to slips and trips. So uh, what I've done is I've picked the top five situations or hazards, so to speak, and these may occur in any type of industry. We tend to think of manufacturing where you have concrete floors and maybe grease products or other liquids on the floor, but you can also see trips and, and falls in the office setting where cords are uh, a problem or mats or carpet edges that can uh, folks can stumble over. Uh, we often see these in the work services industry as well, where there are appliances or equipment in the area that may not drain properly and may leak fluids uh, onto the floor. So I'm going to show you uh, some slides that I put together on this. It's just going to take this a minute to load. And I'm going to go to the first slide here. I apologize for that. Just to go up. Sorry about that. All right, here's just the introductory slide. So the first slide or the first hazard, these are the, the top five hazards that we see are contaminants on the floor. So these may be any type of fluid on the floor. It could be water, could be grease, could be paint products, uh, can be any kind of uh, uh, floor stripping material that can cause a slippery uh, a contact or surface there. So it's very, uh, it's, so it shows down here, food service areas where you've got cafeteria, buffet, ice machines, freezers, those may leak uh, water onto the surface, uh, decontamination areas where there may be equipment that is used with a certain type of cleaning fluid uh, at the end of the day for folks to decontaminate before uh, leaving work, uh, soap dispensers and workplaces, uh, drinking fountains, any kind of building entrances where there may be snow or ice tracked inside. These all, you know, produce a potential hazard that folks can slip on. So as far as prevention strategies, very important to keep the floors dry and clean. Uh, the cleaning process, uh, there are lots of uh, pamphlets and documents on how to properly clean, but basically you think of it as a two-step process where there's cleaning solution that's applied on a section of the floor with a mop. It is then, after a few minutes, cleaned up and rinsed with water and then allowed to dry properly. Um, there's use of um, uh, wear slip, the uh, wearing slip resistant shoes. This is very important. Uh, there are anecdotal studies that show that if a company either purchases these shoes for the employees or shares them the expense of that, that they will actually get a good quality product shoe, which may prevent them slipping, also preventing entry into areas that are wet. So as in this first photo shows, this is a wall-mounted spill mat that you can place on the floor that will sop up any kind of liquids. Here's one that's just a portable uh, device that can carry these slip maps. Uh, this image shows uh, where there's a good configuration near the building entrance where you have uh, paper towels, uh, trash container, a uh, umbrella bag, and also a, a large absorbent mat there. Uh, and this final photo uh, shows where you've got some large mats on the floor, big enough for folks to take several steps. And then you've got these uh, large visual signs that are also connected by a chain, just to really outline that area. The second 
uh, hazard or indoor walking services that are irregular. So generally these are caused by uh, an area in a building where there's damaged uh, flooring, uneven flooring, um, just from wear and tear or poor installation. So we'll often see these um, in hallways, around drains, uh, building entrances. So these, these, excuse me, these photos here will show where there's uh, uneven carpet here where the carpets rippled across here and not laid evenly. Here's some area where there's some drains, which is uneven, and then it appears to be some cracks and wear and tear around, around those drains. So again, preventative strategies would be replace any loose carpeting or buckle carpeting, um, patch or uh, replace any vinyl tile that's damaged. Uh, you want to, if you see areas where there's a quarter inch or more of a step off or uneven level of uh, a walkway adjoining to another walkway that really does need to be filled in or some type of a slope or ramp uh, placed in that area. Um, studies have shown that creating visual cues such as, you know, yellow paint, uh, yellow warning signs, anything to draw folks' attentions to this uneven surface. Um, it's good to replace smooth flooring materials in areas normally exposed to water, grease, or other matter with a rougher flooring. Um, you can see some flooring that has some uh, particles in it, and maybe sand or some kind of a gritty product that they put in to allow you better traction. Um, and it's also important, we don't think about this too much, but in terms of elevators, having them level properly to the hallway floors where you enter those elevators, that's another common area where we'll see some tripping occur. The third uh, category of hazards is inadequate lighting. Um, so this can happen quite a bit in warehouses, uh, parking decks, uh, stairwell wells where you'll see, uh, particularly we'll see some folks that have been injured operating a uh, forklift where they're using it in the back of a warehouse where the, the lighting may be uh, not sufficient. So again, as this outlines, storage rooms, walkways, parking structures. So obviously preventive strategy would to be install more light fixtures in these areas, use very bright lights. Um, that emit from all sides and provide adequate brightness in that area. The fourth hazard type are step stools and ladders. These are used uh, to create height, uh, obviously to get to items, boxes or paperwork or whatnot. But these actually, you know, as we all know, can create a hazardous situation. So these can occur quite commonly in storage areas, medical records offices, uh, kitchens, pantries, um, also any type of manufacturing setting where they may have parts or other supplies that are stacked one above the other, that can become an issue. So in this area, it's important to train employees on the proper use of ladders. OSHA actually has a lengthy uh, document that goes into great detail on the proper use of ladders. Uh, it's important to wear appropriate uh, footwear footwear that's closed and has a non-skid, non-slip surface on the bottom. Um, place the ladders, make sure that they're on a level surface before climbing, make sure they're fully open, and always uh, think of the three point of contact. That can be either two hands and one foot or one hand and two feet to give you uh, a good solid base to where you're reaching for other items. The fifth Type of hazard is improper use of floor mats and runners, and this is fairly common, unfortunately. Uh, mats are used to prevent slips, trips, and falls, but if they're not installed properly or used effectively, they can actually be a hazard. So you'll often see these in entryways, under sinks, around water fountains, um, but they can, as this image shows, get hung up on edges or lifted up, can curl up over time. So it's important to make sure that whoever's in charge of safety or looking around for these you know, areas of potential hazards, that everything is lying flat. So um, mats and runners should be large enough so that you can have several footsteps on them, get contaminants off your shoes. Um, 
Obviously, if you're in an area where there may be ice or snow, additional mats may be needed. Using non-slip mats, uh, also mats that have a non-skid uh, surface underneath. Uh, as it states here, replacing mats that are curled or ripped or worn. Um, and then sometimes uh, industries will paint small markers on the floor to remind staff members where exactly these, these mats should be placed. So these are just five uh, common hazards that we see in the workplace and some strategies how to prevent these. There's a lot of information online um, under OSHA about this as well. Um, so let me stop sharing. And get back here on my video. So there are other areas. Um, there's outdoor areas that are unlevel. There can be areas where there's cords or wires that employees can trip over. Um, there's also issues with uh, stairs and handrails that need to be used properly. So there's actually many more categories than just five hazards, but I just mentioned those fives today. Just as a simple reminder, these are common things, but sometimes obviously these common things are what can cause issues with employees being injured in the workplace. So I hope this is a helpful reminder to you to remind your team members about these potential hazards remind your maintenance or housekeeping uh, folks to look at these, these items and be aware of them and make any changes as necessary to prevent any trips or falls. Um, again, we're glad that you're watching this video. If you would like any further information from me or if there's a specific topic you would like for me to copy or send to you or do a whole video on, I'm happy to do that. You can reach me at sandy.hardy, H-A-R-D-E-E, -E, at prismahealth.org. We'll be happy to do that for you. Also, as a reminder, a lot of companies now are looking at doing their wellness screenings this part of the year, uh, starting... Uh, you know, as this fiscal year starts to wind down, getting ready for the next fiscal year. So we do offer a, law, a very wide variety of different types of screenings that our business health team can do. Um, we do, again, as far as OCMED, have our four locations throughout the state. We also offer on-site services that can be as needed. We can offer a more structured so many hours a week of care at your facility if need be. So we look forward to hearing from you. If there's any other opportunities that you'd like to know about from our team, please feel free to reach out and contact me. You can also find information on Prisma Health on the Business Health webpage. And I thank you for your time. Thank you.